everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. Hey. <gasps> Up? Yo 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 oi oi <laughs> oi oi um this is gonna be a good ep because I accidentally bought way too many books. Ooh, I should guess like, how many you bought. It wasn't until I got home that I and I finally like put them all in a pile that I was like, what the hell was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess first question was it from one day's worth of sh- of shopping or was it over a few days? It was. It was over a few days. It was, like I'd mentioned on the last episode, and you guys obviously all saw Lena was here visiting, mm-hmm. and I mentioned on that episode, we were going to be doing most of the book shopping at the end of the trip, because yeah. that's when we were going to be spending time in Halifax and stuff. Oh. And so we had a couple of days of hitting up bookshops, and I also got a couple of books in the mail. Oh, uh, yeah, that's um, dangerous. <laughs> So yeah, you should guess how many books I bought. One, two. Okay, I'm gonna guess that your total haul is thirteen books, and I'm gonna guess that you bought ten. You're correct. Wait, one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I bought eleven. Ooh, okay, that was close. And then two more were given to me. Okay, I was just one off. Yeah, you were just one off. Yeah. You're actually, you're, I, actually, you did great. You that was pretty really awesome. Good. My psychic um, powers are almost, almost finely honed. <laughs> <laughs> Very well tuned. Um, but yeah, it was such a fun week having Lena visit. It was like a really big proper visit. Mm-hmm. You know, like it was, it was, it was more than a week, which is the oh, most I've awesome. ever had anyone visit me. Yeah. Ever in my entire life. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, wild. When else have I ever had somebody visit for like nine days? It was really, really fun. And um, I'm a little sad she's gone because it was just so much fun to have her around. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm a little bit excited to like get back into my life. Yeah. Like it was just one of those things where it's just like the m- many weeks beforehand, before her visiting... I was just like getting ready for her to visit. Yeah. And then the 10 days that she was here, I was just like fully being there with her. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that was so much time. And I'm like excited to get back into the swing of work and and also reading. Like I just <laughs> yeah. miss reading. And I'm like, God, I feel like I haven't read at all in a month. And I'm like, cool, that's okay. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not upset about it, but I'm also excited to just go back to that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I have a lot of books that I'm, like, really wanting to read for fall because I feel like fall is here. Yeah, I have a whole... This happens to me every year. I have this, like, mental list. I'm like, okay, these are all the yes. books I want to read, but it's, like, 20 books. So I know that it'll yeah. never happen. I'll probably read four. But there's just so many <laughs> books that you want to squeeze into the, the spooky season. Yeah. But also, like, not even just spooky, but, like, the fall vibes, you know? They're yeah. kind of, like... I always think of, think of reading, like, boarding school books in September because I'm like, ah, back to school. Like, that's a good time. Oh, and that's then you've true. got spooky totally season true. with October, and then November is, like, sad books. I don't know. It's yeah. Like sad book November. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how has your week been? Anything interesting going on um, over there? Nothing super interesting. I honestly haven't been reading that much either because I, and I can't get into any of the details on the podcast. Sure. Ariel will will know things about this, but I've yes. been with one of my best pals. We've been planning a party for our other friend, and I can't give any of the details, but it is the most intricate party <laughs> I've ever, <laughs> ever undertaken. Like, I can't... Wow. I'll, I'm so excited to tell you guys about it. It's not happening until October, <laughs> so, like, late okay. October, so... Yeah. Get ready for me to tell you all about it after the fact, but... It's really crazy. I've never had to think so hard about a party before. <laughs> so it's really taking up a lot of my, my brain space, but it's so it's fun. So it's, awesome. it's possibly the most fun party I've ever planned as well. Like I'm having so much fun coming up with this stuff, but it's like, wow, it takes up a lot of your brain. So I have been getting little um, hints here and there, because obviously I'm not involved in this party in yeah. any way, but uh, Raylene will occasionally be like, look, I just crocheted this and i'm like there's crocheting involved for the prep of this party (laughs) oh there's you don't even know how much crochet is involved in this party like we have made about 10 elements so far and there's still at least 10 more to go (laughs) oh my god and like i don't know there's i like like you said i won't say anything but there's been a lot of things uh, that are involved and it's been so so fun to watch you so (laughs) that is cool that that's been taking up a lot of your time yeah it's a fun project Uh, i haven't ever had something quite like this like Last year we did birthday parties for each other, but it was a lot more 
toned down. It was a lot easier to just come yeah. up with and then move on. This yeah. is like, oh no, oh no. This oh, is no. going to take a while, which is why I'm glad that we have like a month and a half to figure it out. Yeah, seriously. Um, <laughs> it involves costumes as well. That's another thing I can say. <laughs> <laughs> it does involve um, elaborate dress. Yeah. Yes. You sent me your costume and yes. it is, I, I just stared at it. I was like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And it's, it's not amazing. for Halloween. It's not even for Halloween. That's the funniest part. Are you going to be doing a separate costume for Halloween? Um, Usually, well, I think I talked about this last year around Halloween time, but my office does really crazy Halloween stuff. So I will definitely be dressing up as something for that. Oh we my god, yes. Last year yeah, was the whole Stranger, Stranger things, things. Yeah, which we won. Thing. I don't know if I talked about that, but our, our department won for that the whole costume and Woo. decor situation, which was awesome. So we're trying to like one up ourselves from last Whoa. year. So we haven't come up with any ideas yet, but I'll definitely be dressing up for that. Um, but outside of work and this party, I, I mean, I might just wear the, one of the costumes at home on Halloween. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Halloween's on it's a Tuesday. true. I do like dressing up for Halloween because it's just fun. Yeah, like it's just I fun love to dress dressing up. up. I love and dress- handing out candy. <laughs> yeah. to the little children. I'm like, here you go. That's true. Woo-hoo! Maybe maybe people will come to my house. I've never actually. I yeah, haven't, I haven't had a situation yet where I'm like in my own house for Halloween. Yeah, because you used to be in an apartment building. I was in an apartment kind of right before. Or, like, up until a month after Halloween. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll hand out candy. That's a great that would idea. Be, I bet you it'll happen. Oh, my gosh. I, um, since we're talking about all of this stuff, um, Halloween prep, etc., mm-hmm. I have started a knitting project. <gasps> Let me grab it. Oh, my gosh, yes. Isn't that funny? That's so funny. <laughs> Who knew Ariel could knit? <laughs> That's a big surprise. So, basically, I went to the, a bunch of yarn shops and also fabric stores with Lena mm. because she does a lot of knitting. She does a lot of, like, clothes making. Mm. And I just thought that it would be fun to take her to a bunch of beautiful Nova Scotian ones. Definitely. <sighs> and I just got a little jealous. I was like, this, is all, this all looks so cute, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to do a little project or something. And so I picked up four... Of these little yarns. Oh my gosh, they're they're so funny. very small. They're like, um, for our audio listeners, they're like three and a half inches tall by like one and a half inches wide. Like just little balls of yarn. I don't think I've ever seen such a small ball of yarn. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> they were only $3.50 and it says a musling free and recycled uh, felted tweed yarn. I don't Ooh. know what that means, but I'm just they letting you all know what it is. They look really nice. They, but they were only $3.50 yeah, each. Awesome. I love tweed yarn. That's the best stuff. It's really, really nice. And so I bought two, one in a dark brown, one in a light-ish, like, uh, brown. And yeah, caramel. And then one in a pumpkin green (gasps) and one in an orange or a pumpkin orange. Yeah. And basically, I've just pinned everything. I'm like, what is that? I need to understand. Basically, I'm creating a bunch of triangles (laughs) that I'm going to do as a bunting, as a garland. (laughs) As a fall autumnal girl. Isn't that so cute? Okay, wait, I love that. That makes me want to do something like that. I know. So I've so far, my goal is to make three of each color. Yeah. And then like put them all on a string or whatever. And we'll see how that goes. I'll I'll update you guys on my little fall project. Because basically I learned how to knit when I was in grade three. Mm. These are the knitting needles that I was given in grade three. (laughs) They're so tiny. <laughs> yes, because they uh, they were for a child. Yeah, they're so miniature. That's funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but these are the only knitting needles I've ever used in my whole life because you I can just only get... make tiny projects because they're tiny. I needles. can only do little things. <laughs> yeah, I love that for you. Um, but yeah, so that's been fun and put that's been putting me in the fall mood for sure. And li- while Lena was doing like her little crafting while we'd watch a movie or whatever, mm-hmm. I would be working on my little triangles, which is perfect because while I do know how to knit, I really only know how to do one type of uh, yeah. stitch yeah. and just like throughout, I can only do that one thing. So I'm just like, I'm just going to do very simple triangles, bunch of triangles. Mm-hmm. I can do that. Do you think this is going to uh, inspire you to keep knitting after this project is done? Like, do you think you want to make more Definitely stuff? not. Definitely not. Okay. No. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I have 
I really like that I know how to knit and that like when I get a little idea, like mm -hmm, I'm gonna mm -hmm. make a little bunting. I have the amount of skill necessary to do that and yeah. it will come out cute and nice. Yeah. But I don't enjoy knitting like I've seen people enjoy knitting where they're like, they wanna whip it out at every moment and yeah, they're like yeah. are really excited looking at patterns and um, who knows though, like what, who knows? Maybe imagine if I become a giant knitter. I just feel like it's not me. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. I have a friend who is obsessed with knitting and crochet and like every like every couple of days she'll just like send me something else like, oh look, I made this outfit. And it's like, what it's do amazing. you mean? How did you and she's like yeah. just comes up with things, like she doesn't even follow patterns most of the time, and I'm like, She's got a crafter's brain, man. I do not have that. I have to follow YouTube a tutorials gift. if I'm gonna do anything special. Oh, which is my yeah. form of crafting. I love doing it, but I have no ideas. <laughs> Yeah, like you follow a guide or whatever. Exactly. Mm. I need someone to give me an idea and then I can just do it. <sighs> Raylene, I'm really excited to talk to you about my haul. Oh, yeah. Shall you better we? jump in. I have a couple of books too, but you go nuts. Mine are not important right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I really want okay. to know what you got. So I want to start with the books at the top of the pile simply because they are at the top of the pile. Mm, yes. And these were two that were sent to me. As I mentioned, the first one is... Please do not touch this exhibit oh. by Jen Campbell. It's such a good cover. It is. It's a very pretty image and a little spooky and like it a, is, I a, like it because it's spooky. It's yeah, like it's like circus a, scary. Yes. Exactly. It's a little <laughs> ghostly. Um, so on the back it says that this poetry collection explores disability, storytelling, the process of mythologizing trauma. It talks about Victorian circuses and folklore, deep seas, dark forests, and Jen's experiences with hospitals or relationship with hospitals. Mm. So Jen is a friend that I made a really long time ago on YouTube. She has a great YouTube book channel, mm -hmm. which uh, we'll definitely link in the description, but I've already seen some of my friends have gotten this as well, <gasps> and they've been reading it, and I'm like, ah, I'm jealous. So <laughs> now I have it, and now I can read it. So that's very exciting. Hell yeah. Triple congrats to Miss Jen Campbell. Woohoo! All right, and then the next one was sent to me by Book of the Month. So I do, I feel like I just want to clarify how I got this book so that yeah. no one, <laughs> everyone's clear. I do, uh, I did a sponsored video on my channel this month with Book of the Month, so mm. they sent me some books. I wouldn't normally talk about them here because it's for the video, but this book is just so perfect for the spooky Halloween season that okay. I had to talk about it. So it is The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin, which at first glance just, you know, looks like a thriller thing. Yeah, it doesn't look like an aerial book at all. At all, right? At all. <laughs> exactly. And But then it says, <laughs> the, the little uh, tagline is, most people wouldn't buy an infamous murder house to renovate for fun, but Sarah is not most people. <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> Just like me. So basically, it's about this woman who is a self-help writer and a therapist, and she's bought a, quote, gorgeous Victorian house in the community of her dreams. And she, because she got a really good deal on it because someone was murdered there. Mm, yep, that'll do it. <laughs> 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 and um and it says plus renovating the house makes for great blog content and i'm like it's me it's about me right <laughs> like agree. it's like it's true. like a, an, a an internet creator renovating a house mm -hmm. but then everything goes to absolute hell in a handbasket and it says <laughs> she discovers the house's secrets she realizes that the deadly legacy has only just begun <gasps> so i just <clears throat> Thought it sounded so cute and fun for this time of year and like yeah. it had a little personal connection to me. Totally. And it sounds like it could be a ghost book, which we know you yes, love. So which I love. So I don't know. I'm excited about it. I think it sounds really cute. And uh, I was thinking this might be the first thriller I've ever read. If I read it, it would be <laughs> the first thriller. I don't remember ever reading a thriller. It's possible, but hmm. yeah, who knows? Who knows? Okay, so we then went to Lunenburg. So mm. this was, it's a must do, okay? It's a must do. I took you to Lunenburg. I yep, take anyone who it. visits me to Lunenburg because it's only an hour outside of Halifax. So if you're already like in Halifax, it's so worth the visit out to Definitely. Lunenburg. Um, everybody that I know that visits Nova Scotia takes a trip out there because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Anyhow, oh. okay. <laughs> So I showed up to the shop 
And I was like, I think I have some books to pick up. And I go up to the front counter and they're like, yeah, you have three books that have been sitting here. And I was like, ah. whoops. <laughs> um, but the exciting thing was, I'd already paid for them. Ooh, which <laughs> free books. That means uh, they're free. That's how it felt. Because I was like, <laughs> I don't remember paying for them. <laughs> I don't and even. therefore, I did not. And therefore, I don't know if I did. Okay, so the first one is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. <laughs> now, my buddies uh-huh. out there are thinking, pardon Why? me. <laughs> um, I've read this book many a time. It's one of my fave teenage books from when I was a teenager. What happened was a teenager I know, it was their birthday. Uh. I wanted to give them a book. I didn't have time to go to the bookstore. So I just gave them my copy of Amy and Rogers. And then I just rebought it for myself. So that's a good hack. Yeah, that is a good hack. I've done that multiple times where I'm like, oh, I don't have time to go. And I was like, I wanted to get them this book. And I just give them my copy. And That's so funny. I would have never thought to do that. But I love that. <laughs> Next up is Swimming in the Dark by Thomas Ooh. Jadrowski. So you and I talked about this a couple episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Both of us were heavily influenced by Elias over at Elias Reads, which is very funny that we both saw that. And we were like, I know, it was just like, it was an Instagram story that we both yeah. saw and both connected with him on. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yeah. So basically, I believe that it's like a bit of a love story between these two men who meet at, or I, yeah, university. So these two men who meet um, at a summer agricultural camp. I'm not sure mm. if I know what that means. But it says it's set in the 1980s in Poland against the violent decline of communism and a passionate love story between two young men who eventually find themselves on opposite sides of the political oh, divide. No! no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like cover. it's going to be devastating and so good. Yeah, but I'm also very excited by the fact that it's really short. It's like 190 pages. So that's yeah. Awesome. And then the other one I had to pick up that I'd ordered before was Letters to a Young Poet by Rainer Maria Rilke. Oh, okay. Well, so if you remember... A couple of months ago, I went to that bookshop and I got one of the bookshops that I needed to visit in Halifax. And Mm. I got a collection of letters between three friends and one of them was Rilke. And I was like, I know he's famous. I just happen to have never read anything by him, but this seemed like a cool book. Then on that, um, because of that episode, I got a bunch of people messaging me and Mm -hmm. they were like, you've got to read Letters to a Young Poet. Like, it's so good. And I was like, all right. And I looked it up and I found this little edition that I really, really like. Yeah, it's so pretty. Um, Very like art deco. And Mm -hmm. I was like, sure, I'll I'll grab that one. So this is, I think it's 10 letters. Um, This guy wrote to Rilke. And he basically asked him, like, do you have advice for a young poet? And Rilke was like, this is my advice, and sent Mm -hmm. him a bunch of letters with, like, ideas and stuff. And it says, the two never met, but over a period of several years, yeah, Rilke wrote them, him, these ten letters, which have been enjoyed by hundreds of thousands. Yeah, that sounds awesome. It sounds great, right? And so little. Okay, so that was Lunenberg. No, it wasn't. Shit, there's two more. (laughs) (laughs) Lunenberg is not over yet. (laughs) I saw A Guest in the House by Emily oh. Carroll. Oh, jealous. Guys, look look at this, really. Oh, look at so this. so good. Oh, my God. So this <gasps> is Emily Carroll's brand new book that very genuinely just came out, like, a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah. And obviously, we love her book, Through the Woods. Mm. And it says that, yeah, she lives in Ontario. I remember that she's Canadian, but oh. I didn't remember where. I think I forgot that. <laughs> I don't really even know what this is about. We don't need to know. <laughs> I don't need to know. Sounds it's like a spooky. ghost, though, again. Yeah. After many lonely years, Abby's just gotten married. She met her new husband, a recently widowed dentist, when he arrived in town with his young daughter seeking a new start. Okay. Uh-oh. Abby starts to wonder, was Sheila's death really by natural causes? <sighs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love through the woods so much it's just hands down one of the best graphic novels mm-hmm. i've ever read mm-hmm. and gorgeous. this is um yeah her new spooky book had to get it had to <laughs> Could okay this it. next one is controversial in 18 different directions Ooh, i don't know Sign if i should have bought it okay uh, <laughs> i'm like i've been staring at it and i'm like that was this i think is genuinely the most impulse 
purchase I've done in a really long time. Oh my gosh, I'm so and excited. And I slightly regret it. Oh my god. So I need to I, know. I need to I know. I would really love if people who have read this would message me and tell me if you guys think I would like it because there's <laughs> let me just share it. Okay. Okay. It is The End of August by You Meaty. Whoa. Have you seen this one? No. It's okay, gorgeous, first of all, though. it's so pretty. It's like a very beautiful book. But here's why Here's why I'm nervous about it. Number yeah. one, it's huge. It's big. It's really I big. I don't read big books. So I don't <laughs> know why I suddenly was like, I'm going to take a leap here. It's 710 <gasps> pages. Oh, my God. Number two, okay. <laughs> and this is, I didn't realize this at the shop. And mm -hmm. I think that if I had realized it, I wouldn't have bought it. It's it, huge swaths of it are in verse. Oh, and like kind of like alternative um alternative writing styles like it's just like a little bit okay. sometimes it suddenly breaks into an interview and like a, a, the first part seems to be a massive run on sentence and so it just seems like it's like All right that sounds appealing to me so, okay, okay. <laughs> The third thing, though, is I forgot this is the author who wrote Tokyo Ueno Station. Oh, I knew I recognized hated. that name. I we knew I recognized that, that name. We didn't oh, like shit. that book. And I totally forgot until I was like, literally, I came home or, or whatever. And I like, like I said, I like looked at it and I was and it said right at the beginning or somewhere. It said like from the author who brought you to Tokyo Ueno Station. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Okay, so this is those are the reasons why I'm worried about it. Why did gotcha. I pick it up? Okay, yeah. what compelled me? It's so pretty. <laughs> First of all, it's so pretty. That obviously was a massive part of it. But the synopsis literally sounds so good that... Okay, let's hear it. Yeah. The synopsis is about a... It starts with a guy, and it's in the 1930s in Japanese-occupied Korea... The, yeah. This guy, Lee Woo Chul, was a running prodigy and a contender for the upcoming Tokyo Olympics. So, sports book, <gasps> sports. hello, and Japanese translated. But yeah. he would have had to run under the Japanese flag, which at the time, Ooh. as you can imagine, would have been really terrible. Yeah. And so, I don't think he does it. It doesn't exactly explicitly say that, but I don't think he does it. So then it says, nearly a century later is when this book kind of takes place. Oh his granddaughter's living in Japan and training to run a marathon herself. Oh and God. then his ghost appears to train her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're going to love this book. Like, it just give it a chance. You're going to uh, love it. It sounds amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> That's so crazy. It is a poetic masterpiece that is sprawling that is a sprawling family saga and a feat of historical fiction full of mind-bending storytelling acrobatics. The end Ooh. of August, August is a marathon of literature. I mean, I think that sounds great. And okay, here's my question because you can flip through it and look. The parts that yeah. are in verse, do they look like they'd be really quick to read? Like are they written in a way no. that like oh. they actually look quite dense. <laughs> Damn it. Like I was thinking I some Ellen Hopkins type of vibes. No, it's not like that. It. Like, I'm going to hold this up to uh, oh, yeah, you and I'll show dense. it on the B-roll. I don't know if it will show very clearly, but it's just kind of like... I think I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe what you should do is, as a That's test, so try and read the first 20 pages or something. Yeah. And see if you vibe with it. If you really don't vibe with it, maybe... Which is what back. I would have done in the shop. Like, if yeah. I had realized it was in verse, in the shop, yeah, I would have yeah. read the first few pages to see, like, oh, okay, actually, no, this is kind of cool, or whatever. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have really taken myself on a little leap here. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Is that the All biggest right. book you have on your TBR? Or do you have others that are bigger than that? I, the only one that I can imagine is longer than that is The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, which I also have. That one is very large. Um, all right. So then after that, we did general shopping in Halifax, hit up a bunch of different shops. And so I don't, I won't really go into whatever shops I went into, but I will just plow through my little pile here. Mm -hmm. I got a used copy of Adverbs by Daniel Handler. It was oh. so cheap. And I really loved Why We Broke Up by Daniel mm -hmm. Handler. And I just got excited in the moment and yeah, bought this. Sense. I picked up... 
Art, Wealth, and Riches by William Morris. So it's a little Ooh. tiny, slim volume. Oh, I love those editions. Yeah. Yeah, they're so pretty. I really like William Morris. I have a lot of William Morris stuff in my house. I have William Morris wallpaper, William Morris oh, curtains, cool. William Morris lens cloths. Uh, love <laughs> William Morris. And so I was like, um, when I saw this, I was like, I'd really like to read some of his writing. I think that yeah. would be cool. So that sounded neat. This. <laughs> Again, I was like, do I? Oh, whatever. I'm on vacation. I picked up <laughs> How to Be Invisible by Kate Bush. So this is mm. Kate Bush, who, you know, wrote Running Up That Hill that got really famous because mm-hmm. of Stranger Things. Um, this is a collection of her lyrics. Oh, cool. I- I've never seen that before. I'm not saying it's never been done, but I've yeah. never seen that before where it's like uh, collecting her lyrics as if they were poems. Yeah, that's really And cool. I was like, wow, this is so neat. And I started to read through it and I was loving the poems and I, or, mm-hmm. I don't know, lyrics. And so I thought, I was like, it would be really cool to like read the, the lyrics and yeah. like interpret them in the way that I interpret them and then listen to the song. Totally. Would be so cool. So got that that's guy. A fun little project. This is a book, I'm very excited about this one, actually. This is a book called The Elements of Style by Strunk and White. This is a that's really... A cl- that's a classic writing book. Yeah, yeah, it's a classic book about writing and grammar and um, etc. It's such a and cool edition, though. Well, that's Damn. the thing. I've been meaning to buy this just for ages. It's but I so keep ugly. not buying it because I'm like, eh, whatever. But this is um, illustrated by Myra Kalman, who illustrated... Oh. Uh, Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler. No way. Yeah. Oh and I That's love cool. her illustration style. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that. That's I, such a cool collaboration. I never knew that cool that happened. That's such a cool project. Um, I love her art. I just think it's so beautiful. So, so that was, I, I was really excited about that find. That's a very good find. Um, and then I got, okay, we're at, sec- we're at the second last one. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm curious if you've heard of this one, Raylene. Venko by Cherie Demoline. Oh, I think I heard about it, like, just loosely when it came out, but I don't know yeah. anything about it. It looks witchy. Yeah. Is so, it witchy? <laughs> yeah. So Cherie Demoline is the author of The Marrow Thieves and also Empire of Wild, which you bought me. Yes. Um, She's, like, a very popular author here in Canada. She's won, like, so many prizes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was in a shop, and I saw this, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize she had a new book out. That looks cool. What's that about? And it just sounded so fun. And it said, (laughs) okay, it says deliciously imaginative and compulsively readable. And I was like, that's what I want. Like, I want, Mm. I'm really craving just fun books that are, like, a real ride. Yeah. Like, I love True Grit because of that this year, where it's just, Mm -hmm. like, you're on a story, and you really are, you really are invested in the plot maybe more than yeah i know else. i need to lean into that more too because plot yeah. is kind of my favorite <laughs> exactly and so basically it's the main character's name is lucky um it says she's an or the orphan daughter of a badass metis good times girl she's barely hanging on to her nowhere life when she finds out that she and her grandmother are about to be evicted from their toronto apartment and then one night, dejectedly doing laundry in their building's dank basement, she feels, she finds a spoon. <laughs> and on the spoon is etched out the word, the letters that spell out Salem. And suddenly Ooh. this like brings out this whole witchy plot line and she has to go find a sp- another spoon to do magic and stuff. Amazing. And I was like, that sounds really, really fun. Yeah, I just realized Venko is like coven. coven. But yeah, yeah. Okay. I did not realize that. And the guy at the till, he was like, do you realize that's like Coven? And I was like, my God. I just clued in because I was like, why is the C capitalized? And I was like, oh, Coven, Coven. Yes, I understand. (laughs) All right. The final book that I bought. I I didn't mean to buy this. And basically, I I saw it. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that he had a new book out. Pulled it off the shelf, sat down, started reading it, read the whole thing in the bookshop. And I was like, well, I what? can't read a book and not buy it. That's no, so that's rude. No, that's basically illegal. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel like that's illegal. This isn't a library. And I also loved it. And so I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to have to buy it. And it is The Skull by Ooh. John Classen. <gasps> oh, I love his books. So let me talk about this for a sec. John Classen is a writer and illustrator, primarily of children's books, who was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and now lives in LA. He's also an animator who worked on Coraline and 
Kung Fu Panda 2, amongst others. The Skull is his newest book, published July 11th, 2023, and was inspired by a Tyrolean folktale. Wow, there's so much about him I didn't know. <laughs> I know. I didn't realize he was an animator. That's really, really That's cool. That's so cool. Um, and I just went to his Instagram to like try and find information about him. And I was like, first of all, why am I not following him? He's so cool. Yeah. But secondly, um, he has a new show that's come out that he I think that he's animated. So that huh. on Apple Plus or something. So oh. the, he's really moving and shaking. I'm going to have to look <laughs> into that. But yeah, what is this book all about? It looks so cool. Oh, my God. It's I'm beautiful. Obse I'm obsessed with this book. So I loved the book that he did with Lemony Snicket, The Dark. I... Oh, yeah. Always, whenever I know someone who has a baby, which albeit it hasn't been very often, but when that <laughs> happens, I always buy them a copy of I Want My Hat Back by John Klassen because I yeah. think it's one of the funniest <laughs> books ever. And I know that mm -hmm. if I was a kid, I would love that book. Yeah. Um, it's about a bear whose hat is stolen and it has a very good ending. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I just, I love his art style and I love I love the stories that he tells. They are, they're all like a little spooky. Mm -hmm. This is almost like a chapter book yeah. like it has more writing and it is longer than Obsessed his other picture books yeah. it's so beautiful it's so so beautiful and basically it's about this girl otilla who runs away from her home like that's the mm. first thing that happens she's running away and she's trying to escape and she stumbles upon a house in the woods and there's a skull living there mm. and they are being hunted by something. I don't want to spoil it. They are kind yeah. of being hunted by something and they have to team up. And it's so beautiful. Like, I was, Amazing. like I said, I sat in the shop and read the whole thing because I was like, <laughs> I'm so enjoying this. I don't want to stop. Yeah. Um, and I did. I was like, if someone makes me stop, which I would have understood, I was yeah. like, I, I'm just going to buy it and finish it today, like yeah, outside yeah. the shop because I was so invested in it. I am obsessed with this. And this is very genuinely going to become the next book I buy for kids. Like if I know anyone who's oh, had a kid right. or, or has a birthday or whatever, I'm getting them this book. It's fantastic. It is a little scary, but not in a bad, scary way in like yeah. a good spooky way maybe like Coraline or mm -hmm. you know kids like spooky stuff a little bit spooky of spooks are totally fine yeah yeah so I really 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 love this and I was so excited that I read it and I I, was, I literally Do you I think I would it. like it because I really you want would love that it now you would okay. love that you would love it it is that. it obviously is a children's book so you'll fly through it if you know, I would rec probably recommend people borrow it from the library because yeah, you're all I've, I've read, read his other kids' picture books. I got them from the library and read them because I just wanted They're to so read good. them like a few They're years so ago. Good. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get all three hat books and read yeah. those. And it was such a fun little, it's so little, fun. little read. And his art style is unbelievable. Like, I, I It's wanna... probably my favorite art style of any kids' books <sighs> I've ever seen, I think. Yeah. I think so, he, he gets me. <laughs> I want to try looking up if there's prints available from this book because I was like, mm. I'd love to have a print. I really love Otilla. Like, she's so badass and cool. Yeah. Um, and the skull. So, good imagery. Oh my god, are you ready? I'm gonna try and hold this. Can you pot. hold them all at the same time? Can I hold them all? What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> that is such a beautifully random haul. I love that Amy and Roger's epic detour is in there. I know, that's so funny. It's very funny. Throwback. I had a lot of fun uh, book shopping. I had felt like I hadn't been book shopping in a while mm. of this kind, where it was just like, I'm on vacation, I'm going to go book shopping and have some fun. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like a few of the books are Halloween-y or ghosty. Yeah, quite perfect. a few of them. Yeah, so I feel like that's what I said at the beginning when I was like, I have a, a couple of ghosty fall type things I mm -hmm. want to prioritize. I'm definitely trying to prioritize those. But Raylene, what about you? What did you buy this week? You said you had a couple things. Yeah, I have a couple books. I didn't actually buy anything. I was sent oh, okay. two books, um, two more manga volumes from Viz Media. So thank you to them for sending cool. these my way. Um, they're kind of random, but uh, let me take okay. you through them. So the first one is Blade of the Moon Princess by Tatsuya Endo, which is about this mm. little little lady who I guess is a princess. But I got this because um, it's by the artist who wrote and like um, drew obviously uh, Spy Family, which is an anime that I oh, love. I haven't read yeah. any of the volumes of Spy Family, but 
Kyle and I are obsessed with the anime. Like, mm -hmm. It's so, so good. So when I saw this on the list, I was like, I have to explore more of what this author has to has to offer. So I got that and I'm excited about that little fantasy manga. And then, <laughs> this is so random, I got Star Wars, The Mandalorian, The oh. Manga, Volume 1. Well, so look at little Yoda. He's his name is Grogu, <laughs> but yes, baby Yoda. <laughs> People will get mad at you for calling him that. I haven't even watched the show, but I know that. Um, and yeah, so I, as I mentioned on the movie tub many many weeks ago, probably a few months ago, yeah. I I had started watching Star Wars for the first time okay. ever. Okay, yeah, and yeah. Kyle and I, what we did is every weekend for like nine weeks, <laughs> we yeah. watched a Star Wars movie every weekend, and Fun. so I've seen them all now and. I still don't really understand a lot of what happens in those movies, but they're yeah. uh, they're a lot of fun. They're sure a lot of fun. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? I think I want to like explore more Star Wars stuff. And so we haven't started watching Mandalorian yet, but that's what's up next. And then when I saw yeah. this on the list, I was like, this is too cool to pass up. So I may even end up reading that volume before I start watching the show. Um, okay, yeah. But that's it. Um, so yeah, thanks again to Viz Media cool. for sending those my way. My little manga haul. I'm so excited yeah. to read some manga, which is fun actually, because the last batch of manga they sent me had like a Junji Ito horror manga in it as well. So I maybe, remember that. maybe I'll read that since it's spooky time. It's so, spooky time. It's spooky time. Okay, so those are the things that you got. <laughs> Definitely, that was a much shorter segment than my segment. Yes. About the books <laughs> I can talk about what I've read. What did you read? Yeah. All right, so I... Um, like I said, I didn't read too much over the past week, but I was listening to an audiobook on my commute and while I was getting ready, and I managed to listen to the whole thing, which was pretty cool. Okay, so cool. I read My Body by Emily Ratajkowski. Emily Ratajkowski is a 32-year-old model and former actress. Her modeling debut is on the cover of the March 2012 issue of the erotic magazine Treats, which led to her appearing in two music videos, Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines and Maroon 5's Love Somebody. Blurred Lines skyrocketed her to fame, helping her land acting roles in Gone Girl, Entourage, and We Are Your Friends, among others. Most of her career has revolved around her body and her beauty, and this book of essays is a chance for readers to learn more about her thoughts, her activism, and personal life. This, first of all, I just want to say, was really great to listen to as an audiobook. Oh. Obviously, she reads it, which is great. Cool. And this, for the first I don't know the last time I did this, I listened to the whole audiobook on one time speed because I just wanted oh, to listen yeah. to the way she told her story, didn't want to yeah. speed her up, and it just felt like the perfect way to listen to it. I don't know what made me choose to do that in the first place. I was just like, That's let's funny. take that off of 1.5. <laughs> and not to 1.25, no, 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 let's bring it back to one, one time speed. It's only like a five That's hour so cool. audiobook, so it didn't feel like I needed yeah. to speed it up for any reason. And it was, it was the right move. It was really nice to just um, take it at her pace. And yeah, so this book, I really, really liked it. I really mm. enjoyed it, and I highly recommend it, um, especially if there's people out there who have maybe ever judged her or judged other models for just, like, putting themselves out there and kind of hmm. being very forthright about their bodies and sexuality and stuff. Like, I feel yeah. like they, this could make you understand where they're coming from a little bit more. And um, hmm. it's so I just found it really interesting for her. She just spoke about things very frankly and kind of, like, didn't hold anything back. And there's lots of different situations that she's been kind of put in that she maybe hmm. hasn't had a chance to talk about before these things essays came out and so you get to yeah. kind of see a lot of different things from her perspective like for example the blurred lines um shoot that whole thing obviously this is a for those who don't know is a music video that came out many years <laughs> ago with uh, her, it was Emily Ratajkowski and a couple of other models and they are topless in the music video and so a lot of people kind of there was a lot of backlash on it because of that, yeah. because it was like, wow, this is over-sexualized and blah, blah, blah. But what I didn't realize, and she talks about it in an entire essay, is that the whole thing was like directed by women and like everybody on set were, oh. it was like a women-led thing. Huh. And it was like yeah. a really lovely atmosphere for them. It was not until Robin Thicke and some other men showed up on set that it kind of became uh. tense and not good and bad things, like not a lot of yeah. bad things happened, but you know, people were taken advantage of and stuff. And it was right. just like, oh, so the, it was just like kind of maddening. It was like they were having a good goddamn time until those yeah. men showed oh, up. That's interesting. So it was, yeah, there was lots of interesting stuff like that, like where you just get a different perspective on things that you either maybe not didn't know about or maybe thought of in a certain, a certain context. And she kind of reframes yeah. it, which was really cool and just really well written. Like she has a really great voice, both in terms of her writing and her mm. actual voice. Um, <laughs> so I highly recommend it. It's a great piece of cool. of like feminist 
um, essays and it's just kind of cool to get a look into the the industry as well. Like if you're just interested in the modeling industry and kind of what that looks like, yeah. it's very, very interesting. So I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what she does next. I hope she, I really hope she writes another book, <laughs> but who knows? Another memoir down for Raylene. Another memoir down, yeah. So that was really nice. I was really You're glad to have read that finally, which I realized it was one of the books that I bought right at the end of last year. In my head, I oh, was like, cool. oh, I don't know when I bought it. And I looked back through my spreadsheet. I bought it on like December 28th. It was one of my... Oh, it was like a Christmas It was book like a something. crazy Christmas thing. So I'm glad that I yeah. managed to read it like within that year. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing I finished. And then I'm still reading Happiness Falls by Angie okay, Kim. Cool. I'm about half or just over the halfway point now. So I can talk about it a, a little bit more. So last week I did kind of give the basic premise so it's about a family their dad is missing and um it's told from the perspective of the 20 year old daughter who has a twin brother and then a younger brother who has um, autism and another syndrome that makes it so he can't speak and so mm. his communication is kind of difficult so what's interesting about this book as well as that their mom is a korean immigrant and she's also a linguist and so a lot okay. of the book is kind of about like linguistics and how people yeah. communicate, which is really cool. And she kind of did that with Miracle Creek as well. So that's obviously something that she's interested in. And hmm. I, I'm glad that she incorporates it into her books because it's kind of a different a different take on like a family yeah. drama. Um, but it's really good so far, though. Only thing I'll say is that particularly right in the first few chapters, there was so much foreshadowing that it was kind of driving oh. me nuts. Like it was it's that kind of thing where like, <laughs> it's a very conversational kind of tone yeah. that the, the um, main character has with the reader. And she's like, oh, if only I had known then that what I know now, I wouldn't have trusted that person. Like stuff like that, that's just like right. very overt. And I was like, can we just, yeah. can I just read the book and make my own assumptions about these yeah. characters? And so I feel like it was kind of trying to steer you to feel a certain way instead of just letting you feel what you want it to feel. Um, but now that I'm halfway through, that's not really happening as much. So I think the things are, are starting to be revealed that um, the foreshadowing was foreshadowing too. So cool, other yeah. than that, though, it's really it's really intriguing Like, because there's, the, there's a whole like police thing. There's like a mommy blogger who got a video that's now like a controversy that's happening. No. And it's like, oh my gosh, there's all these different different layers to yeah. um, the dad going missing and um, kind of what was going on before he went missing and stuff. So it has a lot of interesting angles going on. And now that I'm in the thick of it, and honestly, I've got a lot of the party planning kind of done that I was talking about earlier, like that was taking up a lot of my brain space. Uh, mm. I think I'll have some more time to read. So hopefully I'll be able to finish <laughs> this puppy by next week. So that's spooks. what you're currently reading. Yeah, that's what I'm currently reading. Cool. I'm right in the middle of it. So, that's Okay, well, I am still in the middle of The Vo Diary of a Void. Mm. Um, I just had, didn't have a chance to finish it. But I did start something else, which was <laughs> kind of a, you know, kind of a mistake. But yeah. Le it was because Lena was here and yeah. she really hyped this book up oh, because okay. she saw I had it on my shelves. Yeah. She was like, have you read this? I was like, no. And she was like, oh, my God, like, you need to read this right, like, right away, blah, yeah. blah, blah. You're, you're going to love it. And I got so excited that I took it to bed that night <laughs> and I started reading it. Yeah. And I was like, ah, this is so fun. So I started reading 84 Charing Cross Road. Oh, Okay. And it, yeah, by Helen Hanf. This is the story of Helen Hanf. It's a true story. Right. And it's just, um, it's just a bunch of letters back and forth between her and this bookshop. So the bookshop, it was at 84 Charing Cross Road. And mm -hmm. it was a bookshop that was a like rare um, and antique books, but also they kind of just help her find anything. Mm. So it was written in 1949, it's post-war and she's in America. And they're in England. Okay. In London. And so basically, she it all starts by her just sending them a letter. <laughs> it's very exciting. It's actually very exciting. It's, I'll just read the first letter because it's really short. Gentlemen, your ad in the Saturday Review of Literature says that you specialize in out-of-print books. The phrase antiquarian bookseller scares me somewhat <laughs> as I equate antique with expensive. I am a poor writer with an antiquarian taste in books and all the things I want are impossible to get over here except in very expensive rare editions or in Barnes and Noble's grimy marked up schoolboy copies. <laughs> I enclose a list of my most pressing problems. If you have clean secondhand copies of any of the books on the list for no more than $5 each, will you consider this a purchase order and send them to me? Very truly yours, Helen Hanf or Helene Hanf. 
I love that. So that's how it starts. And then he responds, like the guy who works at the booksellers responds and he's like, yeah, we have some of those books. We've sent those over. Have a good day. Yeah. But then she starts getting kind of crazy. She <laughs> reminds me of me, honestly. <laughs> like she like responds and she's like, um, why did you send me that book? Like that, I it made me sad. I, I didn't really like it. And she's like, could you send me another one of like this kind? And she's like, the weather is kind of weird here today. Like yeah. she's just very chatty. Um, and I just, I'm like, I wish I could talk to her, like write to her. She sounds so fun. Yeah. But basically they become really good friends, her and the main bookseller at that shop. And they're, it's about their friendship and their letters over uh, like a decade. So is the whole thing or written or in letters or are there like in between? Yeah, books? it's all letters. <gasps> it's all the actual oh, letters. Oh, that sounds cool. Um, she start she starts sending them food rationings because they, like she buys them like a big Christmas ham because it's post war England they mm -hmm. just like don't have any food and she's just like sending them gifts all the time and they're like thank you so much like we were able to make a cake for our children for Christmas Aww. and it like already has made me super emotional yeah and like I'm that just, sounds like, like a really heartfelt like yeah that's but. the thing and if it, it feels a little like it has some of the vibes of a Nora Ephron movie mm -hmm. like you've got mail and yeah. when Harry met Sally because it's like you know it's letters and it's people writing about books and yeah, it's yeah. it just feels and like gift giving it just feels very wonderful so i'm reading that and really liking it um okay i have a question now, for you oh, what uh yeah. what's going on with breasts and eggs oh <gasps> i forgot about it i literally <laughs> forgot about it until you just said that <laughs> like, how oh. funny is that yeah because you hadn't mentioned it I last week and i was gonna I was ask reading. but then i was like i'll just let it slide we'll see what happens next week but yeah That's i forgot so but I literally you have a problem, Ariel. I have a problem. I do. I have a problem. Um, all right. Well, uh, sh quickly shifting that aside, <laughs> let's do some book news. <clears throat> Rip out your landline phone and get ready to form some attachments. Rainbow Rowell is back with her first adult novel in a decade. Oh my gosh, that it's took me on such a journey. I thought there was going to be a different type of news, but yes, go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Slow Dance. Mm. It's a standalone. It follows two best friends from their teenage friendship to their adulthood, mm. and it's due out the summer of 2024. Yeah, that's far away. And it's kind of far away, <laughs> but I will be reading it. Yep. Start baking bread and calling up your evil exes, we have a release date for the Scott Pilgrim anime. <laughs> well done. It'll be out November 17th, 2023. Oh my gosh. It's like almost a birthday present to me. It's so soon. Yeah, you're right. Um, it is so soon. We should watch and that I was at the same time. so excited. I was so excited. We let's, should watch that together. Yeah, let's watch it together. <clears throat> Library extends deadlines during crisis. I decided not to make this one funny because it's very not funny. <laughs> <laughs> the Okanagan region was hit with devastating fires over the last few weeks. Mm. As you guys know, I used to live there. Yeah. Um, and apparently I'm still on the mailing list for the library. Oh. And I got an email. So this was like, I didn't even read this. I just got an email and That's I was crazy. like, wow, this is so interesting. I want to put this in book news because it was really cool. I got an email that said, quote, um, they were talking about all of the storm or the fires and everything. And they said, the last thing we want is for anyone to be concerned about library holds, returns and lost or damaged items. All library material that is overdue or damaged as a result of fire will be forgiven. Aww. I thought that was really beautiful and like obviously quite sad, but also just touching. I just, yeah. it felt like a touching librarian moment. It really so is. I was like, yeah. Shout out to those librarians. Okay. Dragon riders get riding. <laughs> okay, I'm really excited about this one. <laughs> Christopher Paolini is releasing, releasing a new book in the oh. Aragon universe. <gasps> the book is called Murtaugh, I think. It, I don't know, you know it's right. one of those fantasy yeah. words. It comes out this November. Ooh. And the author, who famously wrote Aragon when he was only 15 years old, mm -hmm. says, quote, it's the novel I've been waiting to write for over 13 years. Wow. So, I thought that was interesting. That's wild. Okay, my final one. <clears throat> I think this is actually my favorite one. Ooh. Jay-Z, more like easy book access. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what does Jay-Z have to do with this? <laughs> I love your okay. Um, Alrighty. 
the Brook the Brooklyn Public Library teamed up with rapper Jay Z <laughs> to make limited edition library cards that feature Jay Z related iconography <laughs> and art. I think it's all of the covers from his solo albums. Yeah. Um, and it's caused a surge in library card signups. Why did they've he had do that? quote. Yeah, they've had, quote, almost five times the average number of visitors Whoa. and an increase in checked out items. Oh, good. Unquote. So they're not just getting because, cards and leaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because of their collaboration, that was in part done to celebrate the 50th birthday of hip hop. If we remember that was kind of happening. That is crazy. Wow. I thought that was so cool. That I was is like, so cool. Wait a second. Go, Jay-Z, library go. Cards could be sick. They could, yeah. My library card is so ugly. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like most library cards are just just a basic white card. It says the name of the library, yeah. maybe with their logo and then boring information on it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, it could be a really pretty thing that you hire a local artist to design. Yeah, I'd or like whatever. That. Local but library, then I was like, shout out. Hey, you want to? Yeah, I never even get thought cool. about doing a limited edition card and collaborating with people. Yeah, that's I'm really like, cool. Uh, that's such a random I idea, hope, but I love it. I know. I love whoever at the Brooklyn Public Library <laughs> thought that up. Kudos. That was a genius publicity yeah, that's move. Awesome. That's really, really cool. Okay. That's most of my book news um, that I needed to catch up on because we haven't had, we haven't done book news in a long time. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just throw the other two out there because I, I have felt like I had too many, but basically the trailer for Percy Jackson came out Ooh. and I know a lot of people were excited about that. And the trailer for Faux came out, which I am, I'm excited about. I did like watch Saoirse, that. Very exciting. Saoirse Ronan's new movie and it's a book to movie adaptation. So that's exciting. Hell yeah. There you have it, people. There you have it. Will I read any of these dozens of books I just hauled? A baker's dozen. Um, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I think I will. I think I will because a lot of them are spooky. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. As soon as I'm done Happiness Falls, I'm like, what am I going to read into next? The it's got to be spooky. This is like my lead into spooky. I feel like a mystery or thriller is a good gateway yeah. to spooky. So yeah, totally. Maybe you should start Excited. with your thriller. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. It's so much fun to get to do this podcast and we're so grateful to everyone who listens, to everyone who shares it. Like podcasts really do depend on word of mouth. So if you like our show, please think about sharing it with a friend or a mom. Moms like the show a Ooh, lot. Yeah. Um, or just a buddy. I don't know. <laughs> and um, thank you so much to our patrons. We are getting horrifyingly close to our goal <laughs> of 5,000 a month, which That's would true. mean we have to dye our hair peach. Yes. Am I mentally prepared for that? No. Will we better we start it? getting mentally yes. prepared for it because it's coming. Because it's going to happen. It's it could happen. happen within, like, oh my God. It could be before the end of the year if people go crazy, or if not, we'll be looking at peach hair in 2024 for sure. Wow. Yeah. There you have it. We're going to go record <laughs> our Patreon mini podcast, our bonus podcast we do there every week, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.